Hey guys, what's going on? This is John with Gamester81.com. I'm here at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I'm here with Howard Phillips. How are you doing, Howard? Great, thanks. <laughs> and so, so Howard, tell us about your history with Nintendo. You, you were kind of the, the key figurehead to kind of start Nintendo Power and the Fun Club. Kind of tell us a little about, about that experience and working. Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, it was fun. I was just a gamer who happened to start working in the warehouse in 1981 when they were doing the arcade games, Donkey Kong. It was Radar Scope first, then Donkey Kong. And then working in the arcade, in the uh, uh, warehouse, I was un unboxing everything that came in all the time from Japan, from Nintendo in Japan. And so I got to see all the new stuff. And I'd see the new stuff and I'd play it. And then Mr. Arakawa would ask me, he'd wander out in the warehouse and say, well, what do you think? And I'd say, well, this is a this game is kind of cool, or this thing's goofy, and, and give him feedback. And then one thing led to another, and then he ended up asking me which games on the Famicom system that released in 83 in Japan, nice. which of the 47 games I thought we should release for the NES in the US, and so I gave him my recommendations for that. And then kind of one thing led to another, and next next thing you know, I was helping out, making sure that Nintendo Power was really accurate and taught and, and promoted the right games, you know, shared shared which games were the coolest ones, right. made sure we shared that, that that info, et cetera. What were some of the games back then that really caught your eye that you saw, hey, this is the game that Nintendo must have here in the States? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, early early on, the, the easiest thing is which game's not. Like, I remember playing okay. Mahjong and things like that. Sure, or, sure. You know, they say, okay, we definitely want to translate that. that. Yeah, some, yeah, yeah. some weird games. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but certainly, um, some of the earliest games that were really just tight, um, just played really well, like Irem's Kung Fu was a great game. We ended up actually launching that as a Nintendo game, even though Irem did it. Um, and, and obviously, games like Mario, Super Mario was mm -hmm. terrific. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a diehard Legend of Zelda fan, but that wasn't until later, like 80, 86, mm -hmm. 87. But that's you know favorite game of all time, just because it was so cool. If somebody mm -hmm. plays that little flute sound now, I still, right. you know, I go, I go, oh, cool, oh, cool, what just opened up, you know, so it's Sure, fun. sure. We're, now, with the, these games that came out, were there, uh, did you have any idea that they would be this popular as they are today, looking back on it? Um, I, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I did know is that they were really fun. I mean, when the Famicom first showed up, you know, in a box in the warehouse, and I mm -hmm. plugged it in and thought, well, this is the same game that I've been playing on the arcade. This is cool. Mm -hmm. I don't have to keep pushing the, you know, the reset or the replay button on the arcade because we'd open the coin door and, you know, we sure. just play forever that way. But I didn't have to do that. I could just sit there and just keep playing forever. It was so much fun right. at, that I just assumed everybody else would like it. But I never, like, did the next thought of, well, then that means it'll be huge. I just thought, we've got to get this out so everybody can play it. Right. And now you, you start the Nintendo Fun Club first. Yeah. There's seven issues that came out of that. Mm -hmm. And so how did the Nintendo Power come, come to be from that? Uh -huh. Well, um, we had the uh, 800 number. I don't know if you ever called it. Yeah. You could call <laughs> yeah, it and get yeah, a power yeah. tip, right? Sure, sure. Um, and that was a really cool thing. Um, but it, cost, it started costing a lot of money because we started being really successful. Okay. And so we needed some way to get in front of most of the problems that people were having, or kids were having, and players were having. We're getting over like a half dozen uh, problem areas. They just didn't understand mm -hmm. something or didn't know the trick. And so we thought, well, if we can get those six tricks out somehow, we'll cut our 800 number cost in, in half. Or, but uh, that said, also in Japan, which was a couple years ahead of us mm -hmm. in the 8-bit um, revolution, they had these huge magazines, uh, Famicom, Toshuken, et cetera, that were like 250 pages, wow. but all Japanese, which I, I liked it because I could just look at the pictures and yeah. found tremendous value there in the maps and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't get the tips, so Arakawa said, "Well, maybe we should do something to get the tips, not just for the 800, for the you know, bring down the 800 number, but also so that we could uh, provide more information. The kids could then decide which games they like the best." Yeah, absolutely. And the one thing I love about the the classic Nintendo Power magazines is the artwork, the attention to detail with some of these maps you guys put together, including the Howard Nestor comic. So, why don't you talk about a little about that? Howard Nestor sure. Comic, well, I'm, you know, I'm still. I think my eyesight is still a little bit blurry from all the press checks. We'd, I, each month, I'd fly over to Tokyo okay. to where the production house was that did all the paste up of all the artwork, and I just sit there for for a week straight doing nothing but looking at every single screenshot and every the registration of it, and was it the right screenshot, and was the boss in it the right thing, you know, right, was right. what the caption right? So I did all of that work. Because, you know, the last thing you want to do is give out bad information, right? So right. we, you know, worked really hard on that. Um, and then Howard Nestor, that was just kind of a found object. We're thinking, how can we make this magazine interesting? You know, we had the, the 
uh, player, the pros tips, and we had classified information, and we had game reviews, and we had all this stuff, and we think, well, how can we you know, add not just more of that, but do something different. Yeah. And so the idea came up, well, why don't we just, you know, like you, Howard, would talk to a kid when you're in the arcade or something like that, or in the mall, telling them how to play a game. You don't tell them how to play. You don't tell right. them the tip. You just kind of give them a little bit of a nudge in the right <laughs> direction, you know. Right. And, and so we, so they said, well, we'll just do a comic of that. And I said, right. okay. I didn't know how big it was going to be. But, you know, yeah. it was really fun. It was really That's fun. Cool. Do you still have any of the original artwork for, for Howard and Nestor, or do you know where those are I do. Around? I've got, wow. uh, I actually have um, on the uh, website, so I've been sh opening up my archives and sharing a lot of stuff. At face it's Facebook Game Master Howard. Okay. Um, and on that, I've, I found one um, ink drawing that I think is the very first one of Howard standing next to Nestor, and it's just a black and white. And I think that's the, as I recall, that's the very first one. They said, well, what do you think about this? And I said, wow. well, it looks okay. Wow. But then the other thing I also posted um, a few weeks ago is the original exit comic. When I left Nintendo, they mm. did that. I don't know if you remember. They did the riding off into the sunset right. run. Yeah. Well, they also had the artist draw a comic that never got released. That huh. it's kind of got a lot of insider stuff into it too. Wow, unpublished, um, huh? Wow. Yeah. So anyway, I put that up on the site. It's kind of fun. But and where, it, where can people find that real quick? It's uh, fa on Facebook. So it's okay. www.facebook.com. Whack Game Master Howard. Game Master Howard. Awesome. Yeah. I'll put a link below so people can definitely check that out. That's yeah. great. And you brought some brochures here this, today for the Retro Roadshow uh -huh. uh, from Nintendo. Why don't you talk about a little about those brochures and kind of how those came? Yeah. To be? Well, I'm I'm a pack rat. Right. <laughs> um, and so that means that. Um, uh, I just have a lot of boxes with a lot of stuff that I've never, I've never thrown away, and and this is stuff that I've been packing around for 20 years and have never bothered to look at. And so I opened them up the other day and started pulling stuff out. And one of the things that I found was like the AVS, the Advanced Video System, which was Nintendo oh, yeah. when Nintendo first showed the Famicom in the U.S. They called it the AVS. So I found that brochure and wow. I found some other interesting brochures. And I also found a bunch of uh, ROM cartridges, including some that are prototypes that were never released. So wow. I've been kind of going through those on the website for people so, to so, see. So these are that you knew that you had or you just kind of forgot that you had them and you kind of come across them again? I know or? I had some boxes of stuff, but yeah. I didn't know really what was in the boxes. I mean, it's 20 years ago, sure, right? Sure, sure. Right? But again, I, <laughs> I've got all this mountain of stuff that I just, you know, keep because yeah. I don't throw stuff away. Awesome. And now, post until you've been with a lot of other companies, THQ, LucasArts, what what other memories do you have working with those, those certain uh, companies? Um, well, the best days for making games for me were really the early days in Nintendo where there's sure. a, just an emphasis on, on just pure gameplay. Marketing really wasn't a big deal. Competition was a little lower back then, so it was really all about, well, let's just make the best possible games because then we'll sell more of them. Right. But then things started heating up and marketing departments started getting bigger and kind of games started getting um, uh, additional stakeholders besides just the game players themselves. Suddenly there is, you know, co-promotions and we want to do a comic book or we want to do a movie and all this stuff right. kind of started coming into the mix. So I really liked those original days. Um, that said, it was really interesting for me as a hardcore game player and working at, you know, at Nintendo of all places to then get out into the wild and woolly world and right. learn about business and how people kind of tried to do the right thing, but still with these business constraints of, you know, sure. you got to do this, you got to do that. Um, though that said, you know, my last gig was working for Epic Games, and they're the okay. folks who do the Unreal Engine, and right, right. we did uh, the iOS Game of the Year Infinity Blade. Okay, nice. And that yeah. was really fun. Um, yeah. And because those guys, I mean, they are so much about games. It's right. all about making the very best games because right. they want their their um, architecture, their Unreal architecture, to be adopted by as many people as possible. Yeah. So they want to make really great games. Yeah. So, uh, bottom line, it's fun to work on the games and you know cool. forget about everything else. You also have a current uh, Kickstarter you're starting. Uh, that's right. Um, so throughout the last, uh, say, 10 years or so, I've really been fascinated with applications of games outside of just pure game, pure entertainment. Um, when I think back to my early years in Nintendo, and you have kids who are just like loving the games, and you know you see the older brother playing with the with the little brother. The older brother's not punching the little brother; he's actually helping him play the game. Right? right. This, you know, weird stuff. You know, that happened on. And there's all these positive things going on around games, and so I've been fascinated with how we can leverage that into other areas. So I have a Kickstarter. It's called Game Master Howard's Know It All. It's a, a simple little classic app. That um, easy to easy to play but hard to master. That will allow you to um, become a know-it-all of anything in a fast cool. and fun way. And it's interesting because I've been studying um, neuroscience for the last couple okay. of, of years okay. as well, in addition to learning science. And brain scans show that we actually have you have 
two different brain or two different memory systems in your brain. We hmm. all do. I hmm. do too. And and one of them is this one that we've all been using for all these years, this conscious effortful one, the one that we uh, work hard right, at right. using right. when we're trying to remember something, and then we remember it for a half a day and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. but there's another system, and we've been using it all along in games, and it's this automatic habit memory. And it's the mm. thing that allows you to pedal a bi uh, bicycle without thinking about it, sure. without looking at the pedals. You got good at pedaling, not because you stared at the pedals right. and practiced, subconsciously you remember because you were yeah. doing other stuff. Right. When you think about gameplay, you got really good at timing of jumping and things like that yeah. because you were doing other stuff. You're thinking about that thing in the sky that you're trying to reach or whatever right, it is. Right, right. You weren't thinking about the timing. <laughs> and so I've applied that to, to, um, to learning and to memory so that you exercise only that memory system. You're not exercising the conscious effort for one. Cool. So it's not laborious and it's not painful and you get to play a game and have fun while you learn anything. And the game works with anything. Meaning cool. if you want to learn foreign language, if you want to learn your times tables, pre-med anatomy, um, uh, guitar chords for playing guitar. I'm learning how to play guitar. So nice. I put my guitar chords in so I can remember the fingering on the hmm. frets, et cetera. You, it works for anything. So it's, it's really a fun uh, fun project to be working on. That's in Kickstarter right now. Oh, awesome. I will put a link below to that as well, guys. I encourage you guys to check it out. Please uh, ju jump in some funds for that and help support the cause. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Now, you said that's an app and it's going to be available for... What, what so it's a, it's an app. So the launch uh, the launch platform is iOS, just okay. as a development platform. Very very quickly go to Android afterwards. If we're successful enough in the Kickstarter, we'll we'll immediately fire off a simultaneous development path. We'll fork the code and do both at launch. Okay. Um, but then the expectation is well, and the design is such that it will work on mobile systems, but it will also work on consoles or PC. So we can do a Mac or a PC version, a Windows Phone version. We can do a Wii and a Connect version as well. I actually it's cool. I'm excited. About about doing a Kinect version because I want to see the way it, it, you could actually play it with Kinect. So I want to see oh, if I can wow. do it that way. Um, at cool. least the design port in my head, I can play it in Kinect. Awesome. Right? Um, so I'm eager to move to, to that level with it as well. Well, best of luck, Howard. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for what you've done to, for the industry. It's well, great hey, meeting thanks you. Thanks for playing. Thank you.